You bless up, my brother. Yes, I Rastafari. Yes. Can you tell the people out there uh, who you are? Yeah, Rast, you and us. You know, I'm a member of the Mail Church that calls Progressive Movement in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. you know, we've been, our organization has been around for a little over a year, you know, and I'm not representing the Mail Church that calls right here now, but this interview is to really give a overstanding of what Rastafari. All right. Okay. Now that's a good question. Uh, who is a Rastafarian? Well, a Rastafarian is one who sees Rastafari, Haile Selassie, as their God, King, and Savior. Let me repeat: a Rastafarian is one who sees Haile Selassie, Jah Rastafari, as his God, King, and Savior. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, who is allowed to become a Rastafarian? That's another one, you know? Well, it's not so much of allowing someone. There is no, no allowing a one. One come to it on a free will. I can't wait it. The Naya being the second Rastafarian, a free will track. You know, one come to it from their own wanting to know. So it's not um, like you have to have some sort of specific agenda or belief to be arrested. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, another question with, uh, or misconception. Does a person have to dread to be Rasta? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, the first Rastafarian were not dreadlocks people. They were, they were your basic black people, you know. Um, the first Rastafarians, well, the main man was a man named Eber. There was another one named Dunkley. And there was a main man named Howie. There are books written about these gentlemen. And, you know, it's good for every young Rastafarian or one seeking to know what the Rastafari movement is about. To read about these men, but you don't have to necessarily have locks to be arrested. Mm -hmm. What does the dreadlocks symbolize? Well, the dreadlocks get introduced within the Rastafari movement in the 1940s. It, it happened because of these three men I was telling you about. They were the dominant views. Their, their ideas and their views were the dominant views within the Rastafari movement. You know, they were younger men. This was in the 1930s when these virgins was operating. But in the 1940s, middle 40s, there arose some younger men who learned from these gentlemen. But their view was mostly of a biblical view. So in reading the Bible, these virgins will now become known as the Naya Bingi. They, they, they are the ones who bring the culture within the Rastafari. And the dreadlocks is also a part of that culture. The ital food, or what you'd see in America as vegetarian food, that was our next introduction within the Rastafari movement. And a lot of the, the, the lyrical talking speeches of the Rastafari movement was created by these people. Mm -hmm. The culture itself mm -hmm. was originated. Now, you, 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 you hit on something uh, right there when you said uh, the ital. The ital was introduced later, because when uh, I first came into the order, um, they were not telling us about being vegetarian. They just was telling us basically the principles of Moses, of uh, of, of of what was lawful foods. And so, what what is the difference between the Rasta sect, between those who still eat their uh, eat fish? and eat chicken in, in, in those who are ital and strictly vegetarian. If you're a Rasta, do you have to become a vegetarian? No, 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 not necessarily. Because, and this is proven too, because after the Naya Bingi projection of ital liberty and so forth, there arose other Rastafari groups, especially the 12 tribe of Israel. Now the 12 tribe of Israel was like 20, 25 years after Naya Bingi. And 
their, their belief was mostly within Christian, a Christian, a Rasta Christian principle. They, they were not um, penetrating too much of the, the idol culture. So for their objective was about His Majesty being Christ's return. Which was what the elders, the, the first elders had, had preached before. But they also preached that Africa for the African. No, the 12 tribe of Israel was not really preaching Africa for the African. But to come back to that food argument was asking me about. The 12 tribe of Israel is a good example of Rastafarians who don't necessarily have to eat either or vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what would you say is the, the, what is the main objective of the Rastafarian movement? Well, um, <clears throat> the main objective, as I would see, and from my understanding, is the liberation of the mind of black people, specifically black people in the diaspora. What happened is that black people in the diaspora was taught to worship God from their colonial master's perspective. Now, the Rastafari movement come about because of the resistance against that perspective of seeing God. And in the same light, also the government of these colonial masters was rejected by the first Rastafari. And, and Ayla Selassie was seen as our king instead of King George of England, a mm -hmm. colonial king. So the, 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 the Rastafari movement, I would say, is, the, is for the total liberation of the black people's mind from colonial outlook and history and, and religious culture. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm noticing, you know, okay, you got Bingy, you got David House, you got 12 tribe. Um, why is there so much tribalism and division in the Rastafari order? Well, as I told you before, all of this started when the Naya Bingy, well, because the brethren that become known as the Naya Bingy, put it lightly, they like revolted against Owen, Ibert, and Duncan. Because they started reading into the Bible in a literal sense. And Ebert, Brother Ebert was a man who used to burn candles. He was a member of the Messianic, the Ethiopian Messianic Society. He you said, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said he was a member of what? The Ethiopian Messianic Society. He okay. was living in Costa Rica in the 1920s, 30s. He, he migrated back to Jamaica. He, he went to Costa Rica with his family mm -hmm. early in the, in the, in the 1900s. Mm -hmm. Then he returned to Jamaica. He said 1932, 31, mm -hmm. 32, around it. But he was also a member of the Ethiopian Messianic Society. The Ethiopia has a Masonic society? Well, from his perspective that existed in Costa Rica, it would have need to um, have more investigation to prove that point. But throughout the Rastafari movement and throughout our whole movement, we know this elder as a person who was a member of the Masonic society, the Ethiopian Masonic society mm -hmm. in Costa Rica. Now, this is a controversial subject and one I myself personally was taught and actually believe by me being a member of the, uh, the, the Masonic Rastafarian order, the Kemetic Ethiopian. He, he was the first to introduce Kemetic Freemasonry to Rastafari in Jamaica. I forgot the exact date. But now, some people say, and we know as a fact, that there is a lot of Masonic titles, a lot of Masonic titles, and Holly Selassie I hold several of them. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. 